Hey there folks, Paul Markle with Student of the Gun and real quick we want to go over a basic gun school gear checklist or a gear list. Now a lot of you guys, if you've already planned to go to a training school, whether it's handgun or rifle or whatever, you probably put a lot of thought into what gun you're going to take, right? You're like, oh, I'm going to take this gun or that gun or whatever. Okay, great. You thought about that. You probably thought about how much ammunition you have. Step number one, go to the school's gear list. Go to the school's website and read the gear list. And then read it again. Then make sure you have everything that's on that gear list. Now, if you're going to a school that doesn't have a detailed gear list, or maybe it just talks about the gun and the ammo and so forth, I'm going to give you a few hints as somebody who's doing this for, been doing this for quite a long time. Number one, make sure, at least for my classes, that you have a rigid, solid holster. Uh, this is a crossbreed super tuck style holster right here. So this goes inside the waistbands, concealed carry, right? Uh, this is a Black Hawk outside of the waistband that you put on just a regular belt outside of the waistband or if you wanted to, you could set up an entire belt with the holster and spare ammunition pouches and maybe a first aid kit and so forth. Uh, depends on how far you want to go. And maybe you thought about that already. Great. Whatever you do, make sure that you have a good, solid, reliable holster. Not one of these cheap one size fits nothing things. Uh, the reason I say rigid holster because there are still a lot of companies out there that sell these nylon, stitch nylon holsters. And when you take the gun out, when you draw the gun out, the holster collapses. And what happens in training classes is people end up muzzling themselves, muzzling their legs, and they're trying to get the gun back in. They draw it, they do a drill, they got to put it back in, the holsters collapse. Now they have a loaded gun and they're fiddling around with it. That's bad juju, all right? I won't allow those in my training class because quite frankly, they're dangerous. There's no reason why you can't get a good, solid, rigid inside of the waistband or outside of the waistband holster. In addition to your holster, make sure that you have spare magazine pouches. Now, you guys might think, oh, I'm just gonna dump my mags in my pocket. But at some point in time, you may be kneeling or laying on the ground or in an awkward position and it'll be hard to get your magazines out of your pocket. Just do yourself a favor, get one or two or three or four of these to keep your spare magazines in. Or if you have a belt, you can put your spare magazines in there. Something else that will help you greatly if you spend the extra few dollars or extra $20 or whatever to get a set of not only earmuffs, but electronic sound amplification earmuffs. These will allow you to much easier or much clearer to hear the instructor's commands. And of course, these are, are uh, intelligent electronics. They cut out the harsh noises, but they amplify safe noises. You'll have a better time uh, and you'll have a better experience if you have something like these. If you can't afford them or whatever, just get regular ones, but get good earmuffs, all right? Wrap around eyeglasses. If you wear prescription glasses, they need to be shatterproof glasses. Uh, and if you don't wear prescriptions, that's fine. You can get regular wraparound eyeglasses like this from your local hardware store. Or if you want to get fancy, you can get the, you know, the fancy cool looking ones or whatever. You have to have protective eyewear and you have to have ear protection. Now, in addition to eye and ear protection, you need to take some type of a hat with a bill. And the reason is, is because you're going to be online with other people and other people will be shooting. And you're like, well, it's no big deal if my brass comes back and hits me in the glasses. Yeah, but there's a guy sitting next to you, you're shooting, 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 he shoots, or maybe it's two lanes over and a piece of brass comes up and it hits right here. I've seen it happen and uh, it's not a fun experience for anybody. The piece of brass will hit and it'll catch right there on the eye protection. And the eye protection will hold that hot brass against your eyebrow. Now, if it's pistol brass, it's going to hurt, probably won't scar. If it's 5.56 five, or 7.62 brass and it goes up and it lands right there, it will absolutely scar and burn your skin. 
So how do we avoid that? Well, it's super easy. Put these on, then we put this guy on right here. So any drop, any brass that's coming, hits the bill and falls off, right? So uh, you definitely need to have some type of a hat or you wanna have some type of a hat on the range with you. Of course, to protect your head from the sun. Speaking of the elements, I don't know about you guys, but when I run a class, we reserve the, the range, we have the time set up, and we're training. Unless there's thunder and lightning, we're training. If it's windy, if it's cold, if it's raining, regular rain, not thunder and lightning, but regular rain, we're training. So you need to be prepared for that. One of the things you want to make sure that you're taking is foul weather gear, a good rain slash wind breaking jacket, a good rain wind breaking jacket. Pack that up, take it with you. Maybe you won't need it, take it so you'll have it. Other things, insect repellent, just in case, you never know if it's hot. If it's hot and humid and you're in the south, it's probably gonna be bugs in and out around the range. Uh, sunscreen, always a good thing to have. You don't wanna be burned, because if you get burned up on the back of your neck and your arms and so forth, if you get a burn on day one, then you go up day two, all you're gonna be focusing on is your sunburn and how it hurts. Lip balm. Uh, lip balm, good thing. I shouldn't even have to explain that, but get some, put it in your pockets. And I put this bottle on the table to remind me, to remind you to have a water bottle or a dedicated water collection device that you can refill from a cooler or what have you. Take your own water to the range with you. Make sure you have plenty of water and don't rely on anybody else. Those are just a few things, but the reason I wanted to, uh, make sure that I said this and, and did this video because a lot of people will show up on the range without everything they need or without everything I just mentioned. And then they spend their time worrying about gear problems instead of worrying about learning. You wanna be able to focus on learning, focus on the training, focus on what the instructors are telling you, focus on the learning. If you're having gear problems constantly, that's going to be a distraction. Uh, you know, if the bugs are biting you, if you got a sunburn, if your lips are chapped, uh, you're thirsty, whatever, or you're cold, or you're wet, you're not going to be able to focus on the learning. We want to focus on the learning, not on gear problems. So take the time long before you go to the class to make sure you have all of the gear that you need. There you go. That's it from me, Paul Markle at Student of the Gun. Remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.